Hey guys, this is Simon and welcome back to my libgdx tutorial series. So last time we learned how to load our map that we created in tiled and how to render it. And in this part we are going into more programmatic mode. So we learn how to read something out from the tiled map. And I want that, I want that we then create our uh, physics objects which are responsible for the collision so that we cannot move inside trees or something that we create that out of the map. But uh, first of all, I need to mention a few things that I forgot to mention in the last part. So some mistakes that I did, not really mistakes, but things that I've forgotten to explain. So the first thing that we forgot, I think, is that we did not call the dispose method of our map renderer. So that's also a disposable. But in fact, it does not do anything because... Um, the map render in our case does not own the sprite patch because we pass it to the constructor. So it does not need to dispose the, the patch manually. But anyway, I would, as a best practice, still call it because maybe at some point the, the programming part here in the background changes a little bit and then maybe something else needs to be disposed, not only the patch. And so that we don't forget it, we need to call it. And also, I'm not sure, but the sprite patch itself, as we saw now in the map renderer, also needs to be disposed. So I added those two lines. I think I forgot that in the previous parts. Then I showed the documentation regarding the profiler and it seems that the documentation was outdated because I tried it then a little bit. And what you actually need to do is not that you call static methods, instead you need to create real uh, methods of an instance of the profiler. So you need to create a new one, give it uh, the graphics context of your GDX application. Then you need to, you can enable and disable it. So I just enabled it and then you can lock something. So in this case, I wanted to show the number of texture bindings that are happening and the number of draw calls which are happening. And once you lock something, you need to call the reset methods to reset all its internal values. And in the end, it looks then like this in our case. So we see here our map and we see now the bindings and the draw calls. So right now we have one texture binding because we have the big texture that we packed last time and we have two different draw calls. I don't know why it's two. Maybe it's because of the of the rendering of the Box2D debug renderer. Maybe that's one call and the other call is then the rendering of the map, but not 100% sure. But anyway, we, the important part is that we only have one texture binding in every frame. And one last thing that I forgot to mention is that um, we already did that, but the asset manager actually that we created here in our main game uh, is not static. And when you read something in the Wikipedia pages of libgdx, you will see that they recommend that you do not make it a, a static variable. And the reason for that is, in my opinion, that on, on phone devices, you have the problem that the static memory and the, I don't know what, what is the correct word for it, but the normal memory, so like this one, um, is handled in a different way because uh, static memory will be freed up if the phone thinks that it needs that. So imagine we our game is running on the phone and then a phone call is coming and it needs to free up some resources because not uh, it needs more for the phone call, which is the, the active application on your phone. Then it will remove something from the from the static memory and maybe also from from. Uh, memory specific things like the, the textures or some videos or audio files or something like that. So it will free up those things. And when you then return to the application, to our game, it would then create a new instance if it's static and does not know, of course, the previous state of, of the static um, instance. I, I showed it then at the moment, uh, in a moment in an example, but that's the reason why you should not have, in my opinion, static variables which have some state, so which change over time and need to, to remember something. You should avoid that as a best practice because you will have or you will face issues then when you deploy your game to a phone device. On the desktop, it's totally fine. That's no issue if you use that. But on a phone, there you will get issues. And yeah, to show you an example, what, what I meant before. So... 
one thing that is mentioned also in the book that I had if, uh, I have recommended is something like this. So you have a, a class. Let's in, uh, take into account here uh, an enum, and let's say we have a map manager which is responsible to uh, manage all our different maps. Then we have an instance, and then we have something like uh, maybe I don't know map something. A map cache is like new map something. Da, 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 da. So something like this. So that's the easiest way to define a singleton in Java. So what would happen now is that over time, of course, our map cache will grow because we load new maps, we put it inside, and it has some, some state. That, that, that's how you call it. And at some point, our game goes in the background, needs to free up some memory. And then later on, when we return to the game on the phone, it will create a new instance of the map manager. And of course, the cache then is again empty. And the state that we had before, so like we had maybe two or three maps already inside that, that one will be forgotten. And that is really, really then a difficult uh, bug to find. So that's why as a best practice, you should try to avoid static things uh, when, you, when you program for, uh, for a phone. Again, on desktop, no problem at all. But on a phone, you will have issues. And that's why on the libgdx Wikipedia pages, they also recommend that the asset manager should not be static for that reason. Because then when your application goes in the background because of the phone call, everything will be still in memory that you need for the game because it's created that way. And if there is still not enough memory and it needs to remove something from the, your app, then the entire game will shut down and you anyway need to restart it and everything is refreshed from you. So that's why there you face, the, uh, face then less issues. Okay, that, that is also just something that I wanted to mention. And I saw in the video also here, instead of two, we should here use here a one, but that's a really minor thing. That's, that's not very important. I just saw that. Okay, and now let's continue with the fun part. So with the coding part. <laughs> 